All right, what's going on, boys and girls? So this particular video was uh, requested of me to do a reaction to. Now, it's been a, about a month since I've done any content on my own channel. Got a lot of other stuff going on, a lot of stuff in the, behind the scenes that you guys will be seeing me on. Uh, so this particular video, no context, no nothing. I'm just going by the title. Linux three weeks in. I'm assuming he just switched to Linux three weeks ago. Good, bad, and different. It's actually a relatively short video for a lot of the ones that I normally would do reactions to, but I am curious, so I want to hear what Homeboy's got to say. A couple weeks ago, I decided to finally make the jump and switch to Linux. I was tired of all the BS surrounding Windows that I had to deal with, and I was also really excited to experience something I hadn't tried before. Trying. So, first thing off, uh, much that's the right mindset to take is you know come into something excited to want to try it uh hopefully he takes that as it's going to be different but i guess we'll find out i knew things is something i always typically enjoy as i consider myself a fairly open-minded person especially when it comes to this tech stuff like this it's been about three so answers my rhetorical question apparently then if you're taking an open-minded approach, I'm not going to probably poo-poo poo all over this video. Uh, I'm assuming a lot of people are expecting me to like grrr, tear it and tear in the F, but it, it's all about the approach. People don't understand what these videos is that I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if you, you know, spreading stupid as fact is just still spreading stupid facts at the or facts at that point. It, you're just spreading stupid and you're factually being stupid that, that's where i get annoyed that's usually where the mean and the, all the swearing and everything else comes out but so far i got nothing to complain about yeah three weeks since i made the switch and i wanted to make an update video on how it's been going firstly i want to talk about the immediate pros linux has a lot of advantages over windows and i'm already beginning to appreciate the differences between the two operating systems first of all linux runs so much lighter than windows on Windows, my system would idle at around two and a half gigabytes of RAM with the, that's like with the bare minimum stuff open in the background. On my desktop running Pop OS with a GNOME desktop environment, also with minimal background apps open, the system idles at around one and a half gigs of RAM. Go so good choice on Pop OS. Uh waiting to see what your t what your cons are maybe you know but uh pop os is a good choice for a lot of people who are just coming into it um i'm personally not the biggest fan of gnome but that's more of an aesthetic and workflow flavor than anything else but as far as pe people trying out new distros or people who want like hey here's a baseline place to start pop os isn't a bad place to go Going even further, my laptop running Manjaro Linux with the XFCE desktop environment idles at around 660 megabytes of RAM, which is just... Nice to see somebody told you, go run Manjaro. <laughs> uh, just going to say, be careful. Uh, AUR is great, but AUR can bite you in the ass too. Speaking as someone who runs Arch-based distros quite frequently... Um, one of my laptops is running Garuda Linux. The, other, the This particular machine that I'm recording this on is actually being done on Salient OS, which is another Arch-based distro. Uh, so yeah, just... it's The AUR is the equivalent to PPAs. You add too many from the AUR, you add too much PPAs, it can potentially introduce new avenues of breaking your shit. So I just tell people to be cautious. Just over half a gigabyte. Mind you, this is comparing the stock Windows experience with the Rice Linux experience. So even with pretty themes and extra desktop applications or extensions running, Linux still takes the cake for performance by a wide margin. Speaking of the customization, this is another one of like the obvious pros. On Windows, you can customize things like a little bit, but not to the extent you can on Windows. I can change everything down to the kernel itself if I want to on Linux, which is something that I really appreciate as an enthusiast. I haven't gone that deep down the rabbit hole yet, but I have riced my desktop environment with custom community created themes, extensions, and applications. Pop OS ships by default with the GNOME desktop environment, which on its own I don't much care for, but with a couple of extensions like Dash to Dock, which adds an application dock, Arc Menu, which adds something similar to the classic Windows 7 start menu, and a custom user theme, things start to get pretty cozy. 
Another thing I really love so far is the terminal. Yeah, it, it does come kind of tedious to do stuff by typing in commands, and this can be true for a few things, but it does definitely have its uses. If I want to edit a system file for whatever reason, instead of opening the file manager, navigating to where the file is, and then opening it, I can just type one command and do the exact same thing. It's really great for installing programs too. Instead of going down to the program's website, finding the right installer, downloading it, running it, I can type one command and install the package I want. It's something that takes a bit of getting used to, but you end up appreciating it in the end. So, you're an enthusiast, so I'm not going to really lambast too much on the, the, the terminal is great stuff. Uh, the terminal has its uses, I won't lie. The, the going to the website thing, you're definitely right from the Windows perspective that, that a lot of the times that is what you have to do generically what i would recommend is some instead of going to the website mentality go use the software center pop shop in your case or uh pomac in or add remove software in manjaro much better for that just my recommendation if you're you know gonna throw it to new users the gui is a far better medium know your audience if you're a tinker enthusiast like yourself CLI, command line, totally fine. If you're throwing it at mom and pop who, uh, they might know what the blinking cursor means from, you know, computers back in the early 90s and late 80s, but they don't know what to do with it, you might want to point them to the graphical user interface, you know, the pop shop and the pop Mac and stuff. Again, recommendations. I'm not, I'm not lambasting. That's a personal preference. And if you don't want to take the time to learn the terminal, you can do pretty much everything you can in the terminal in a normal GUI. So it's not a big deal if you can't be bothered with it. So. It took the words out of my mouth. I need to let homies to finish speaking. Now that all the great stuff is out of the way, it's time to talk about the issues I've had so far. I'm going to go through these one by one and rank each of them one through five, five being the most difficult to deal with. Thankfully, most of these were really minor things fixed by a Google search and some quick work, but they're still worth mentioning. Firstly, I had an issue where, occasionally, the desktop would freeze, go black for a second, and come back a few seconds later. I have no idea what was causing this, but it looked to me like a case of bad video drivers. So I installed the latest drivers from NVIDIA, and it fixed the issue. Updating video drivers is actually easier on Linux than on Windows, only taking one click. One out of five. Uh, yeah, that can... <laughs> that can be a number of issues. Uh, generically, you'd be correct. Um... Depends on the system. Uh, Gnome has had weird issues with like it overloading the RAM after a certain point, and basically the system just becomes useless. It's been known to happen, uh, but generically, you are right. It's actually the video drivers. Secondly, I had an issue with screen tearing in games and videos. This was happening any time there was a quick motion on screen, and it really annoyed the crap out of me. So I looked up how to fix it, and it was as simple as changing one setting in the NVIDIA control panel. One out of five. Yeah, that's a, a flip. So I can't remember the actual checkbox name for it, but yeah, it's like the screen flipping or whatever it is. And yeah, you, you disable that, most of the screen tearing usually goes away. Again, annoyance, totally valid, but simple to fix, as you stated. The last issue I had was with Team Fortress 2. I already talked about it in my VAC video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically I was having bad performance issues and I needed to do some modding and tweaking to fix it. It took me a while to find a fix online that worked, and it frustrated me that a native Linux game ran so poorly out of the box. I was able to get it running at almost, but not quite, Windows performance levels, but it did take some elbow grease. 3 out of 5. Now, another thing I want to talk about is programming. I can't really, I, I can't speak to that because I don't play TF2. Um, I don't know when the last time that it was updated. I don't, there's a lot of situational stuff to that kind of stuff. Uh, so in that particular program's case, that's a, that's a valid criticism. It doesn't detract from your experience. I can't say the last time I played TF2 on Linux that I had that issue, but that's, again, my experience. You're just giving yours. And a 3 out of 5 is totally reasonable. Um, it's annoying. And I, 
but I'm not going to chalk it up to anything other than what you might run into with certain games on Windows as, as the same deal. Sometimes, you know, go, go run the, the old version of Fallout 3 without any mods like vanilla. Good luck. Uh, go play Time Shift. Go play uh, Dragon... Dragon Guard, uh, uh, Dragon Song, uh, uh, River of Time. Uh, there's a few games that I can think of that really just don't work. So it's a valid criticism, but no different than hunting around and trying to figure out what DLLs and all this other crap that you might need on certain Windows games to get them to work too. So again, valid criticism. Just apples to apples comparison i would say it's kind of no different than when certain games don't work on windows their performance is garbage it's just it's a different os so it's going to have not the similar problems that you're used to as far as like fixes and all that stuff programs and games as you probably know many beloved and widely used apps either refuse to run on linux without the help of tools like wine or proton and others refuse to run at all so far i haven't had any issues with this all my native Linux games run perfectly with the exception of TF2, and the Windows games I've tested with Proton have worked fine. SCP Secret Lab runs fine despite being an unstable game even on Windows, and Sea of Thieves runs fine as long as VSync is enabled in-game. For the applications I can't run on Linux, I've found alternatives. For recording and getting clips, I've switched to OBS from Shadowplay. For schoolwork, I've started using the online version of Microsoft Office instead of normal Office apps. Yes, I know LibreOffice does exist, I actually used it for a while and liked it a lot, but my school pays for my Office subscription and I enjoy that better, so I might as well take advantage. Not knocking, you're using Office you know, 365 or online. If you need something local, may I recommend, uh, and LibreOffice doesn't do it for you, Soft, SoftMaker Office or WPS Office. They tend to, in my experience, have better compatibility with Windows-based stuff if you need something like a full suite that's local. A lot of people tell you also, also only Office if you want you know, the, the free and open source stuff. But those three apps are just some recommendations if you need something local that is Office comparable. Um, I, I find LibreOffice is good for 95% of people, but the 5% it actually isn't good for. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, just some recommendations. Now, all these things considered, was the Switch worth it? I would say yes, definitely. Switching to Linux has been great so far. I've had less issues in day-to-day -day use than I had with Windows, and the issues I do come across are simple fixes that usually just take a few minutes to deal with. If you're thinking of switching to Linux or on the fence about it, definitely give it a chance. You can always switch back if you don't enjoy it, but I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you decide to stick with it for a while. Uh, I really don't have much more to add to this. Uh, this is well thought out. This is well structured. This is clear and concise. He's taking an open-minded approach. It's everything you want. And like at the end where he said, if this doesn't work for you, you can always switch back. And that's true. But at least you made the attempt. I, the only thing I will add is do it more than a day, a week. The, those challenges are stupid. In order, you have to do stuff within repetition and constant use in order to get used to something. So I would recommend three, four, four weeks of constant use. Like there's a Dust Geek did a 30 day challenge. Uh, there's a few other people that I'm not going to plug at all that have done 30 day challenges that allowed them to switch to Linux. So I think this is a well thought out, well structured video. It's fair. It's gives us pros, gives us cons, gives us experiences. And it's not bombastic or any of that kind of stuff as far as the claims like, oh, this sucks because X, Y, or Z and doesn't go into any details about X, Y, and Z. And those videos are the ones that really generically piss me off. But as far as this one, A+, plus, homie. Uh, but, uh, welcome to the, <laughs> the, the land of Linux users. And uh, yeah, so I would definitely give it a... Uh, a plus on this one.